Colleen. And what I found most interesting about the tour was the fact that the people here um, are completely empowered and the value that you obviously place on each individual employee so that they um, will do the best that they possibly can. I mean, it's what you give um, forth, you get back. And, and that's uh, what really struck me, mm -hmm. having worked in different corporate environments. Um, I've never experienced anything like that before, and I think it was uh, a really nice thing to see. Uh, this place just absolutely reeks of ownership of the job. Uh, th there is no question that, that the people doing the work are see themselves as absolutely linked to that work. It is theirs. The, the second thing that struck me is, Carl, how much you knew about all of the small changes that had been made. How much information you had, how close you had obviously been to it and still at the same time had not trampled all over these people, mm -hmm. had, had not done anything, in fact had done many things obviously to give them the belief that it was their job and their responsibility to work on. So I'm going to turn the table on you, sir. What do you think was the most important thing you did to accomplish that? You know, on this journey, Paul and, and Bruce and everybody here, is the belief that I have inside that these guys and gals here can do it, and the belief that I have in myself that we can do this all as an organization. And, and Carl asked about how many matrix, you know, top-level matrix and things. And I have some basic matrix, you know, because I've been doing this so long. But the, the real matrix is in watching the innovation, knowing that we're heading in a direction that makes us better, believing in the people, and seeing all the changes, inventory fall off dollar amount, cycle times fall down. And that's what we're trying to hone in now, is hone our skills so I can give back more matrix to the people, because they're at a point now where they want the matrix. You know, first it was getting the belief first, and knowing that we could do it. Now they know they can do it, they want to really know how good they are. And I don't have good matrix to, to fall back on because they want to see the increment and it's going to be small incremental changes but they want to see that ladder keep going up and up and up and then taking over business from our competition so I believe I believe in this whole thing it's like it's like uh, uh, what's the name of the, the good witch Glend Glendella Glenda. Glenda. Glenda the good witch <laughs> I believe in that so much that thing there you know believe in yourself it's all in the power click your shoes and these guys click their shoes here every day so, all present. What I found most intriguing was the simple things, the little changes that you've made over a long period of time but have had the most profound effect. In particular, how organized and neat and labeled and process-centric everything is versus people-centric. Um, you could go anywhere in the factory, anywhere in the company, it seemed, and the process was laid out. Everything was labeled. You knew where the parts are and um, how things needed to work. So it was very, very impressive. It made me very excited to go home and clean my own home and uh, apply it actually hopefully with a new business venture that I might be getting into with our family. So thank you for having us. It was very um, inspiring and I wish you all the best. Well, this was fascinating. Uh, my name's Jim and I believe it's the leader's job to create the environment. And you clearly have done that here. And you can tell that by the enthusiasm of every employee that you have. So you built the environment. And there's one other point that I'd like to make, and that is that it's throughout the entire system, the entire business system. It's not just in one little section, but it's all the way through, from sales all the way through to delivery. And that's very, very impressive. Uh, first of all, I, from the minute we walked in, uh, we found uh, unique ways you were tapping into customer information. Not only ways to understand uh, what they wanted and who they were, but also ways to empathize with them in terms of their phone calls and how can we react quickly, how can we very quickly get um, the, the quote on a picture or do something else like that to show them right now that we understand your issue and we have a way to share that with you. So you reach out and touch them, I think, in very unique ways. And that was just the front end of the off, uh, the front end of the process. The back end of the office, I think. I want to say every time, but almost every time probably, each person who talked 
spoke about the customer from their own perspective. Everyone said, well, you know, the customer doesn't want to wait. Well, you know, this is how, how much better we can get for the customer. So not only were you uh, finding ways to mine data and find ways to reach out, but the depth of the customer perspective was, was, was very deep. It just, it just went all the way across the organization. That was really cool. One thing that, that I really noticed uh, is no matter where you walked or no matter who you talked to, I didn't see any evidence of, of, of a hierarchical structure in the organization. Everybody felt as important as the person next to them whether it was you, Carl, as a president or the, or the person that was uh, putting something in a box to ship. There, there seemed to be a, an equal status throughout the organization and a feeling that, that they, in fact, could do whatever they needed to do to make their job better. And the, the other constant theme, wherever we went, was you know, typically you hear this thing bandered around, is this going to make the company more competitive and, and more efficient? And, we're, and it's going to be more profitable. But the one common theme here is, and, it, and I think it just continued to reinforce the behavior, is this is a whole lot better environment to work in. I love my job now. I don't have that stress I had. You know, from the concrete head that, that worked out in, uh, in the machining that uh, said, there's no way we're going to do that. To, to that person now being really convinced that it's only the beginning and there's so much more we can do. It was, again, on our, the behalf of our group, thank you for letting us come in here.